Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, I'm sure you're doing great. I'm doing just fine too. Uh, thanks for watching me here today on YouTube. Uh, yep, I appreciate it. Uh, now, we, we got some more people this week. This happens every so often um, on, on my channel here on YouTube. YouTube? Uh, and it's, ha it's happened a, a few times again this week where people who, who will watch a couple of my videos, maybe it's people who, who uh, are not familiar with Uncle Lou. Uh, I don't know who that could possibly be, but anyway... Uh, and, and I get a bunch of messages or comments that go basically something like this here. Uh, why don't you talk about football, Uncle Lou? Uh, you're a Georgia fan and this is a Georgia channel. Why don't you break down the game and... Uh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode before I made this, uh, video. Uh, so that was the phone ringing there. Uh, if you're wondering who it was that was calling Uncle Lou, uh, it was ESPN calling me to remind me that I'm not a football analyst! I'm not a football analyst! Okay? Uh, that's not, that, that's not what I do! Can I talk about football and break the game down? Yeah! Uh, would it be interesting or entertaining? No! And it would be the same thing you've been reading on ESPN or Yahoo Sports or any Georgia blog or web page uh, or whatever. The only difference is you would have to stare at this uh, while I did it. And people would much rather just read it. <laughs> okay. Uh... This is the first game that Georgia is an underdog in this year. We're between a six and a half and a seven and a half point underdog, uh, depending on where you look. Uh, can Georgia win this game? Yes. Uh, will they win? I don't know. Uh, we'll watch the game and see. But they've got a good chance. What do they have to do? Let's break it down. Number one. Got to run the ball way better than we did the last two weeks. Need to run it more along the lines of what we saw week one against North Carolina. How can we do that? Two key things here. Number one, offensive line. Wake up. Block people. Make some holes for Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. That's what we need. We do not need another game uh, of Nick Chubb 60 yards and three and a half yards of carry. Don't need that. Need him back up in the six, seven yard of carry range. Uh, that would be great. Uh, okay, so besides the offensive line, how else can we help that? Jacob Eason. If he keeps throwing the ball like he did against Missouri, teams will not be able to continually keep seven, eight, and nine people in the box. It just won't happen. So, Jacob Eason, light it up in the air. Uh, force the defense to play some nickel and some things like that. That should open up some running lanes for Nicholas Chubb. Number two key to the game. This is Uncle Lou breaks down the game. Uh, key, uh, key number two. Uno, dos. Uh, yep, for all my uh, Mexican-speaking audience out there. Uh, pass defense. We have got to cover the Ole Miss receivers. This was a huge problem week one against Missouri, um, especially number 12, Briscoe, was getting picked on and got burned way too many times. Um, gave up 300 yards passing in the first half to Missouri. Uh, that, that's unacceptable. Um, that cannot happen against uh, Ole Miss. Chad Kelly is a better quarterback than Locke from Missouri. They're both really good, but uh, Chad Kelly is an NFL quarterback. He will get drafted and get an opportunity in the NFL can't allow him to sit back there all day and pick apart the secondary so we got to get some pressure on chad kelly as good as he is um he is sort of a, a gunslinger sort of a, a brett Favre type he'll he'll take some chances with the ball especially if you can get him under some pressure make some noise around his feet things like that he does tend to make some mistakes we have to capitalize on said mistakes now uga is like second in the sec i believe in turnovers and turnover differential that's great What's not so great, UJ has scored a grand total of zero points off turnovers. Uh, How is that even possible? How does that happen? Uh, well, I'll tell you one of the ways it happens. No field goal kicker. So let's break down the kicking game. Uh, it ain't very good. 
Oh, uh, this guy Ham, I don't know what it, I don't know what's going on. And it's not just that he misses kicks. Uh, his kicks don't even look like kicks. Uh, the ball doesn't even spin end over end like a normal field goal kick does. The, the, the thing turns sideways. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Uh, and it's not like he's missing 55-yard kicks. The guy's missing kicks from extra point distance. Got to start making those. Uh, so cap creating turnovers and capitalizing on them. Uh, no mistakes in the kicking game. Uh, no mistakes in special teams in general. We can't give away any free points to, to Mississippi in this game. Uh, we've got a lockdown on, on kick coverage. It would also be nice to create a couple opportunities on special teams, whether that's a block kick, block punt. Uh, a, a long return or a long return for a touchdown. Uh, these things uh, have to happen. Now, an advantage for UJ in this game. Ole Miss has been absolutely embarrassing in the second half of games, okay? They've gotten out to big leads against both Florida State and Alabama, 20-something point leads. What happens in the second half? They blow it. They disappear. UJ, on the other hand, has been sort of the opposite. We have tend to improve uh, in the second half. We've made some adjustments in the Missouri game. Um, gave up only one touchdown in the second half to Missouri, and that was off of a UJ turnover uh, where they scored on the first play from like our 10 or 15 yard line. Uh, so we created a lot of turnovers in the second half, shut down Missouri's offense in the second half. So we've been a better second half team than, than Mississippi has. They've just completely disappeared. So those are the keys to the game. That's how you break down football. Uh, please tell me in the comment section how exciting and entertaining this was, and please forward this uh, to ESPN, uh, Fox Sports, um, whoever else needs a, a new analyst and tell them, hire Uncle Lou. Uh, good morning.